Sorry. Yeah. Jesus, I've only got one nose. It's yeah. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Uh, listen, how many people are going to be playing this morning? Hello, everyone. Welcome back for more. Let's play You Don't Know Jack, Volume 2. One is golf in the middle ages. Oh, poor you. You don't have any friends today. Oh, no, well, I don't. Let's have your name. Or any day. See, we're just leaving jars all over the sound, but we can't leave these. What's in this? Okay, you want to do a seven-question game, or do you want 21? Hey, you're the boss. We're done. 30 seconds. Okay, you want to buzz in on the letter B. That's B as in last of the Bohicans. That doesn't work yeah, that way, dude. I don't know who is it. 20 well, seconds. I know, but I know that they're famous, and I couldn't really go look at these. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. All right. Uh, when, you, when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz in, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices, or you're going to lose cash. All right? All right, all right. Let's get this show on the road, Ten huh? Seconds. Good luck. Okay, Nine. lose the desktop. Eight, eight, seven. And go black. Five. Cue graphics. Four, and stand by. Three. Rush hour has just begun. This movie has not yet been rated. where high culture and pop culture collide. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Good to see ya. Y'all tucked in? Then let's turn out the lights. Come on, we need a category. Oh, uh, let's see. This game is really funny. Let's start with question one eight. All right, next up. The big stars come out at night. Two G's for a right answer. Okay, get ready to fill in the blank. From the U.S., Tom Hanks looks like the biggest star. From Germany, David Hasselhoff looks like the biggest star. But what's the biggest star in our galaxy as seen from the Earth's surface? Uh -huh. Okay, let's see. Type in your... Uh. That was beautiful. <laughs> yes, it's the sun, duh. Trick question or something? Right, go ahead and pick one. Just catching the people that don't really know this stuff? I don't know. The category. The only gum my cheerleader lets me chew. Two thousand bucks for right answer. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Imagine the Wrigley Corporation comes out with a new line called Spirit Gum. What misunderstanding might this name cause? Dentists will use it in reconstructive work. Parapsychologists will think it's ectoplasm. Actors will try and stick beards on with it. Or traditional coopers will seal barrels with it. Yeah, not that difficult. Actors use spirit yeah. gum to stick on false hair. <laughs> and they use spearmint gum to keep from grossing out their co-stars in love scenes. How about it? We need a category. Question three. The category is, why is that worm holding a sign that says John 316? Okay, three grand coming at ya. Okay, listen up. You're watching an exciting football game. Your team is deep in the opponent's territory when suddenly your coach sends in the world's largest tapeworm at running back. It's third and two. The tapeworm takes a handoff just inside the 11 yard line. If he extends his body fully before the ball hits the ground, what will be the result? Fourth down on the 10 yard line. Fourth down on the nine yard line. A first down or a touchdown? World's largest tapeworm? Huh. A tapeworm can grow up to yeah. 33 feet long, so you've got a touchdown. <laughs> I can't believe the opposing coach claimed his knee was down at the one. They don't have knees. Take your pick. What do you say? Hallelujah! Bow your hands and pray to this category is toilet paper and the supernatural. Get this right, get $2,000. Remember Mr. Whipple, that curmudgeonly grocer from the Charmin bath tissue commercials? Suppose Mr. Whipple quits his job at the grocery store to follow a religious figure who uses magic to heal the sick. What could Whipple say to protect his master from troublesome admirers? Please don't squeeze the salmon, please don't squeeze the shaman, please don't squeeze the Brahma, or please don't squeeze the ramen.
a shaman. A shaman uses supernatural powers to yeah. heal people. Uh, excuse me, ladies. Please don't squeeze the shaman. But, Mr. Whipple, your shaman is so squeezably soft. Ew. Okay, pick a category. And this question's category is fun with fannies. And this one's going to be worth $1,001 bills. Suppose you decided to sell your soul to Lucifer. In exchange for your soul, Lucifer fills your butt with Luciferin. <laughs> What'll your butt do? Glow like a firefly, squirt honey like a bee, spin silk like a spider, or sting like a yellow jacket? Luciferin is the pigment that makes fireflies glow. Sorry, and thinking. And would definitely make that late night trip to the bathroom a hell of a lot easier. No, it won't. How about it? We Considering need a where you have to look, but it'd be kind of awkward on the neck anyway. Uh oh, press what's with mind door. It's time for a snicker. Here's a gibberish category. He's making a list and checking it twice. The opening value is $5,000. I haven't done too well with these lately. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, and uh, I'm going to be taking away a little bit of cash every second and a half. Okay, tell me, with what title does this rhyme? A kid is love, status, a noun, we. And remember, don't get tripped up by the punctuation. Blue numero uno, it's the name of a romantic book. Remember what a book is, don't you? No. A romantic book that was turned into a movie. Last clue, cross that bridge when you come to it. The heartwarming story of a middle-aged mother of two who cheats on her husband with a wandering photographer. A kid is love status and noun we. Oh. You no. suppose Clint Eastwood driving his that truck one. through the covered bridges is a metaphor for something? Come on, we need a category. Yeah, why not? Seven o'clock news. <clears throat> Question seven. Category, let's do it. Murder she dumped. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. Check this out. If Jessica Fletcher for Murder, She Wrote gave up her mystery writing and pursued a career as a Fletcher, what might the show be renamed? Racket she laced, arrows she made, rugby she played, or tennis balls she had? Fletchers make arrows. Arrows she made. A Fletcher is a maker of arrows. Yeah, that's all we need. She's scary enough without being armed. Go ahead and pick one. Hmm. Order me the taco plate with a side of question eight. And this category is, what the heck is he so happy about? 3,000 bucks for this one. The happy painter Bob Ross has just finished another happy little masterpiece. Bob always ends the show with the parting words, happy painting and God bless. How could he amend this slogan to possibly attract more Confucianists to his audience? Happy painting and may you have it all law. Happy painting and respect your parents. Happy painting and rock on. Or happy painting and love Mephistopheles. I'm pretty sure Confucianists don't worry about Allah or Mephistopheles. We're rocking on. They might, but, you know. Reverence for one's parents yeah. or filial piety is considered the prime virtue of Confucian ethics. So remember, no painting a crack on Dad's forehead or black, 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 and in any of Mom's teeth. Just happy little trees. Take your pick. What do you say? Don't max stop. Don't, don't max stop. Oh, here Wait we go. Whoa, we are Really branching out here, people. <laughs> Finally! Believe it or not, we are making a celebrity collect call to none other than the drummer who put the Fleetwood and Fleetwood Mac, Mr. Mick Fleetwood. Hello, Mick Fleetwood, rumors, number one best selling album of all time. How cool is it? Uh, hold on, it's ringing. Just sit tight, folks. Hello. This might take a while. Yeah, I have a collect call from a Mr. Buzz from You Don't Know Jack. 
We accept the oh, charges. Jack, yeah, yeah, that's that, that chat show my manager told me about. Yeah, okay, I'll accept the charges. Okay. Colin Collette, that's pretty darn cheeky. <laughs> cheeky, huh? Mick, um, it's Buzz from You Don't Know Jack. Uh, I'm glad we caught you. Yeah, you caught me all right. So is, is this going to take long, mate? Oh, no, 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 don't, uh, don't worry. Time will fly. Look, Mick, I, I just have to tell you, Rumors is like my favorite album of all time. Uh, Wow, seventh grade. Stevie Nicks, I, I mean, oh God. wow. The scarves and, and, the, and the flowing skirts. Uh, and Buzz, the, is there a point to this call, or did you just call me to tell me about some of your tawdry fantasies? <laughs> no, sorry about that. Uh, look, Mick, I, I was just wondering if uh, you could maybe drum up a question for our contestants. <laughs> so what do you think? Uh, I think you must have gotten your gig through relatives. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you're not far yeah. from the truth. <clears throat> so, anyway, uh, can you help us out? Yeah, I suppose I can come up with something. I'm not sure what you're looking for, though. Come on. Backstage, uh, uh, chicks, touring, buses, Buzz, you know. I've done things on the road that your little mind hasn't even invented yet. <laughs> Good thing I got all my shots. <laughs> uh, look, Mick, I'm going to put you on with my, uh, my producer, Cookie, and you guys can work out a question, and then we'll get back to you in a bit, okay? Yeah, okay. I'll just chat a bit with Cookie, then. Chat a bit. I love it. All right, Mick Fleetwood, ladies and gentlemen. We'll uh, rejoin the British Basher in just a moment. Uh, let's uh, pick another category. <laughs> yeah, I'm on. There we go. Okay. Okay. Just to let you know, if you might have you might have heard me mention the fiber optic field trip before, you've essentially seen the celebrity version of it just there. Basically, he calls somebody and it goes into you know they go into a little discussion. Then later in the episode, it comes back to this. It automatically picks that question for you later on. Um. The fiber optic field trip was the same thing, except they were just a, uh, they just called random people. I don't know how they picked it out of a book, or if it was just, you know, uh, family members of the cast, or what have you. But that is actually Mick Fleetwood they were talking to, as the story goes anyway. They also got people like Tim Allen and a few other minor celebrities at the time. But, uh... In England, you wouldn't have gotten that. Yeah, in the UK version, they had they replaced all that with pub quiz. Yeah, where they would call bartender and have the bartender ask the you know, from what I recall, the bartender would ask the whole bar question. You know, things like that. So anyway, onward. Now you know that is what we hadn't seen yet. That type of question. Hey, pick a category. Three is a magic number. This one's gonna be three is a magic number. Okay, the right answer nets you 1,000 bucks. All right, fingers limbered, cuz here comes the question. Which of these groups actually has three members? The Three Musketeers, Three Dog Night, The Three Stooges, or The Three Amigos? Once, twice, three times an amigo. Mm -hmm. I like The Three Amigos and a baby a lot better though. It, it was so heartwarming. How about it? We need a category. The category is Take a Bite Out of Crime Fighters. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. Because of her nickname, which female TV detective might you grind up and sprinkle on your dinner salad? Suzanne Anderson from Police Woman, Lucy Bates from Hill Street Blues, Dee Dee McCall from Hunter, or Mary Beth Lacey from Cagney and Lacey? I have no idea. I don't remember watching any of these shows, much less the characters in them. No, I have no idea. Here's what you should have picked. She was commonly known as Pepper. And nothing was more exciting than watching her stop a gang of sneezing criminals. All right, we've been through round one. Let's get on to round two. Now remember, round two means double the value of the questions, which means more cash won or more cash lost. Let's go. OK, 
Okay, we are back on our Celebrity Collect call with Mick Fleetwood. Mick, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Buzz. Uh, had a wonderful chat with your friend, Kooky. <laughs> yeah, he is Kooky. Uh, did you come up with a question, uh, matey? Uh, yes, uh, Buzz. Have you ever spoken to someone with a British accent before? Uh, yeah, uh, sure I have, uh, bloke. Oh, uh, throw your category on the bobby, governor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can tell you don't get out of that sound booth much, do you, Buzz? Uh, <laughs> uh, sure, I, uh, uh, no. But okay, then here we go, then. The category is Beat On This. And uh, we're going to make this one worth $5,000. Now, as a drummer, I have come across quite a variety of percussion instruments in my lifetime. So which of the following is not a drum? Plonker, a dondo, pandero, and barimba. A dondo sounds like a movement, not a... Uh, Mick, they picked a dondo. A dondo? No, no, no. Oh, That's that is a, a drum. talking drum, and wait, it's saying something. You're wrong! Uh, Mick, I wouldn't no just one got the right answer. Back. Well, you should have picked plonker. <gasps> a plonker's not a drum, it's British slang for your manhood. Remember that advert for Jiffy Condoms? If she's game and wants your plonker, wear a jiffy so you can bonk her. <laughs> Better luck next time. <laughs> wow, Mick, Never heard that, that was both fun and educational. You British have a word for everything. Well, Buzz, it was a bit racy, but I know you Yanks like that off-color fare. <laughs> uh, listen, Mick, speaking of plonkers, um, let me ask you a quick question. On, on the cover of your album, Rumors, wh what exactly is that hanging off the zip of your pants? Bollocks. has <laughs> got to go now, mate. Hello? Bollocks. <laughs> Yeah, must be some kind of musical term or something. Okay, uh, Mick Fleetwood, everybody. Let's move on and pick another category. All right, go ahead and pick one. Yeah. Twelve. Celebrity voice impersonated. Category. Social class and seating arrangements. We are talking four big ones. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. On some airlines, you can choose to fly coach, business class, or first class. Suppose you had the option of flying plebeian class. If that were your choice, where would you most likely be seated? In a deluxe onboard penthouse, in the co-pilot seat, in any window seat, or in an uncomfortable seat behind the lavatories? Yeah, I have a funny feeling. The plebeians of ancient Rome were definitely second-class citizens when compared to the patricians, so you'd probably get stuck in a lousy seat. <laughs> Passengers, please restore your seats to their upright position, and plebeians, please stop tampering with the laboratories. Take your pick. What do you say? I love 13 number 13. Uh -huh. Okay, coming up, this category is... Just give me the damn eggs and go away. $6,000 could be yours. Hang on tight, because here we go. Okay, I'll eat them, Sam I am. Yes, I'll eat your eggs and ham. I'll eat them all down to the dregs, but only if they're Robin's eggs. What type of eggs are you going to eat? Speckled eggs and ham, pink eggs and ham, blue eggs and ham, or ochre eggs and ham. Robin's have blue eggs. Robin's lay blue eggs. <laughs> Ah, you know that Sam I am really needs to get a life. Yeah, that problem. Come on, we need a category. We wish you a number 14 and a happy Hanukkah. And we call this one, take this trombone and shove it. And this one's worth $2,000. All right, here we go. Ah, imagine a battle royale among the different sections of a standard orchestra. Based on sheer numbers alone, which instrumentalist would emerge victorious? The violin section, the viola section, the clarinet section, or the flute section? I have no idea in the standard orchestra. I know it was like in high school orchestra. Nuh-uh. Shoulda picked this. There are traditionally over 30 violinists who could fight for their cause. Luckily for the tuba player, strength in numbers doesn't always win. Alright, go ahead and pick one. Excellent choice. It's time to play this or that. Category for this dis or that question is... Play with more... 
force. Okay, I'm gonna read off a list of seven words, and for each Jedis. one, I want you to tell me if it's something from the Star Wars yeah. movies or a term used in music. I'm not doing music. good with music this, As ep each of this them episode. Comes up, if it's a term from Star Wars, press one. If it's a term used in music, press two. And press four to skip. You get a thousand dollars for each right answer, and you lose a thousand for each one you get wrong, or you just don't get to. Okay, give me 30 seconds on the clock. Let's do it. Coda, Star Wars or musical term? Yoda. Boba Fett. Subido Piano. Dagobah System. Timbrel Trill. Last one, Senza Sardini. Aw. That's all seven. Never heard that one myself, so anyway. Six right, one wrong. Nothing to shake a stick at. There you go. All right, let's move on. How about it? We need a category. What this game does not do ever. King 16! Hey, this category is be nice. We got four grand on the table. Okay, get ready to buzz in and type your answer. You know how Bill is a nickname for William and Bob is a nickname for Robert? Well, because Jack is a nickname too, I could be more formal when I tell you that you don't know Jack by saying you don't know blank. I'm trying to think what they're going to come up with. I know it's John, but... Okay, let your fingers do the walk. Jack is a nickname for John. Yep. <laughs> but if we were really being formal here, I'd Jonathan. be wearing pants. Oh, that too. Okay, pick a category. Shake your bank, keep it clean, 17. And this question's category is vacation plans of obsessive compulsives. Get this right, get $2,000. Okay, take a shot at this. You love to travel and are obsessed with hygiene products. Which of the following is not actually something you can do? Take a cruise to the Ivory Coast, climb the lava flows of Kame, drink with zest from an Irish spring, or stay home and listen to your dial tone. Hmm. Take a cruise. Does the word Titanic mean anything to you? Oh well. In case you're interested, here's the right answer. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's no such place as Kame. But if there were, I'm sure it would be the most kissably soft place. Yeah, I was the thinking they were going to catch me saying cruises don't go there or something. Come no Kame didn't actually exist though. Oh well. I suppose that's obvious, but the, the fact that they picked the wrong is, answer. I'd like to teach the world to do the hustle. This one's worth six grand. Get your fingers ready. Here's one coming at you. Shaking your booty is great, but it's pretty small scale. If you really wanted to be bold and shake your booty, what would you be doing? Gyrating East Africa, vibrating Central America, jiggling Southeast Asia, or pumping Micronesia. Djibouti shares borders with Somalia and Ethiopia, so you should be gyrating East Africa. <laughs> It's fun, it's good exercise, and it makes the Iberian Peninsula insane with jealousy. Honestly, I only know that because Take it sounds bed. like what do you booty. Say? And I was in high school when I was studying geography. Go figure. Like a bad Hollywood scene, it was question 19. <laughs> Category, let's do it. It's the nation's capital, dig? And this one's worth $4,000. Hey, want to see my vacation photos? Here's one from our nation's capital. Now tell me, what's the best name for this landmark dedicated to a 70s sitcom character? Lincoln Memorial, the Halls of Huggy Bear, George Jefferson Memorial, or Freddie Washington Monument? That kind of looks like the Washington, doesn't it? This is what the Washington Monument might look like if it were named after Welcome Back Cotter's Freddie Washington. It'd be appropriate because most politicians are sweat hogs. Alright, go ahead and pick one. A little devil, do ya? The fresh saver. I want to bet this is about 21 category. Jump Street. 
A little depp will do ya. Pop a right answer, you got 4K. Okay, hang tight, put your fingers on your buzzers, here's the question. Based on the German translation of his last name, which role should Johnny Depp play in a production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Snow White, Grumpy, Doc, or Dopey? The English translation of the German word Depp is dope. But for some reason, none of his German viewers seems too confused. How about it? We need a category. Oh, cat scan for the jack attack. The attack is now. If you see two words that match, buzz in. A right answer nets you two grand. But every wrong answer drops you down two grand. Listen, not all matches are true. Remember the clue. Only buzz in on a match that fits this clue. Cat scan. Speaking of which, here's another expensive procedure. Good luck. Cat in the pole. Okay, here we go. Commercials and uh, Cookie, what's going on here? Hey, you know what? You're not only at the top of the high scoreboard, you're at the top of my list. Oh, wait a minute. I have my list upside down. Anyway, uh, if you want to play again, just let me know. Government agents known as firemen infiltrate underground trivia competitions, arresting players, and seizing games. Captain, look at all these discs. God, trivia makes me sick. Burn them. Burn all the discs. Aw, burning You'll discs. You'll never get away with this. You don't know, Jack. 451. The answer is none of the above. Coming soon to a gigaplex near you. <laughs> you want to make sure your family is getting movie. a nutritious home anyway, meal. But with your this has been another episode of Let's Play You Don't Know Jack, Volume 2. Colostomy bags. See you all again bags, for the final one of this volume before we move on to, to the next one. So Take care, folks. Taste and as always, I leave you with the, the commercials. Honey, this Salisbury steak is great. And juicy. Finally, you can be confident that your family is eating good food because you eat it first. All you do is eat the raw ingredients in the morning. Let it digest for 10 hours, then enjoy. Just a few simple steps and you've got a hot and healthy meal cooked with a little oven in your own little oven. I can cook my family a nutritious three-course meal while I'm at work, on the golf course, or even stuck in traffic. And the best thing about Eat and Serve Colostomy Bags? Cleanup is a breeze. Don't forget to try the even slower cooking crotch pot. Cross the line of good taste into great taste. Thanks for calling the movie ending phone. Press 1 for a brief introduction to our service. Press 2 if you know which movie you'd like to hear the ending do. Press 3 for movies near you that are almost over. We understand that you don't have time to sit in a dark movie theater with people you don't know. That's where the movie ending phone comes in. Just press the number on your touchtone pad that corresponds to the movie you wish you had seen. Kevin Costner's The Russian Spy. Why deal with high admission prices, bad popcorn, and sticky floors? Pacino lives, De Niro dies. Why let the person next to you ruin the movie for you when you can do it yourself? They drive off a cliff. Let your friends talk about all the movies they want. You'll never have to cover your ears again. Kevin Spacey is Kaiser Soze. 
And he's the killer in seven. The movie ending phone. You'll never have to leave the house again. It's his sled. Hey, Carly, you see that cute guy behind me? I think he's checking out my butt. Um, no offense, Sharon, but I really don't think so. Oh, don't be jealous, Carly. Believe me, I'm not. What I'm trying to say is, Sharon, you don't have a butt. <laughs> it may sound funny to you, but not to someone with congenitally flat buttocks. Hello, my friends. It's Ira Pudlis, and I'm here to tell you about a brand new product designed for those of us with a gluteal deficiency. It's called Freer Butt, and here's how it works. Right before you go to bed, spread a handful of the Freer Butt flavor crystals on your tushy. <laughs> let it set for a few minutes, add water, and go to sleep. And then let Freer Butt go to work. In the morning, you'll have an ample bottom the whole family can enjoy. Hooray! Atta girl! And just think how impressed your friends will be. Hey there, Carly. Sharon? Oh my god, look at your ass! It's a miracle! <laughs> no, it's not a miracle. It's free a butt. All I can say is, girl, you are back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sheila. What'd you get for the Judeo-Christian winter holidays? Oh, I got an Eleanor Roosevelt doll. Bummer. I want a doll that's fun. Well, come on and play with my new Mindy doll. You got a new Mindy? I got new Miami Beach Mindy. Look. Wow, her own bikini wax kit and mustache bleach. And I got her little sister, throwing up Sandy. Wow, they're so thin and beautiful. With Miami Beach Mindy, I know that math is hard, but who cares? We'll never be paying for our drinks. Miami Beach Mindy. Condo sold separately with Executive Greg Dowell. <laughs> 